So I have been messing around with the Sony FX30 for the last couple of weeks, and after putting it through its paces, testing out a bunch of footage, I've concluded that you probably shouldn't get this camera. Until you've seen the end of this video. Yeah, they had us the first half, I'm not gonna lie. What's going on guys, it's Kofi Boa, and in today's video, we're going to talk about 10 things that you need to know about the Sony FX30. If you're thinking about picking this guy up or you're waiting for a pre-order, there's some things that you need to know about this camera before it shows up on your door. Number one, let's get rid of the obvious. The Sony FX30 is a crop sensor camera, which means that it's going to have a smaller sensor than something that's full frame. On top of that, when you're working with the camera, especially when you're choosing your lenses, you're going to have to multiply the actual focal length by 1.5 times in order to get something called a full frame equivalent. So if you're trying to actually match up a focal length from your Sony FX30 to another camera that's full frame, just make sure that you're using a lens that's about 1.5 times its size in order to make sure that those things equal each other. Now that's not to say that APS-C is a bad system or bad cameras. I don't know where that whole culture has become where full frame is the only thing that's the answer but it is pretty good and APS-C cameras still matter. Now, number two is actually going to be the audio handle. Now, first of all, the audio top handle that comes with the Sony FX30 is actually optional. So if you don't necessarily need that XLR input, that's basically the K3M module that Sony offers, but in a top handle format, you have an option to not buy that. And in fact, I actually got the Sony FX30 without the top handle for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I do have my Sony FX6 and an external recorder for XLR input audio. But on top of that, the top handle isn't necessarily a very long handle and it's not kind of made to fit into a hand. Now that might be because my hands are, are fairly large, but the top handle is a little bit on the shorter side. And on top of that, it's, it's a little bit flimsy. In fact, when I had the Sony FX3, I, I, I broke it. I broke mine. By using the small rig handle extension that attaches onto that top handle for your Sony FX30, that's a great piece of kit that you can use to give you a little bit more room for your hands for handheld shooting. And on top of that, it's a great way to try to protect it to some degree. Unless you're using the Sony proprietary microphone, you're not gonna have a good time because a lot of times those microphones just don't fit. So a way that you could remedy that is you could find rubber spacers that work on most of the Sony top handles. But when I use these rubber stoppers to actually give a little bit of room to fit into those handles and fit into those mounts, everything works as well as it should. Now the Sony FX30 also uses something called downsampling, and that's something that a lot of new cameras that are a little bit cheaper are using as a way of giving them more image quality, a little bit more sharpness, and to honestly make them look a little bit more expensive. Now what happens with downsampling at 4K is that it actually takes a sample of the dimensions of 4K, but it takes it from a resolution that's much higher than it. That way you're gonna have a little bit more detail, a little bit more resolution, and overall your image is going to look sharper. Now some people might not like this look, but some people might prefer it, Personally, for me, I'd rather have a little bit more sharpness that I could bring things back in post than not having enough and trying to bring those up. Now, all of the Sony FX line does have dual native ISO, particularly when you're shooting at S-Log3. Now, up until this point, cameras have had 800 ISO and 12,800 in the FX line, but the Sony FX3 is a little bit different. It does have 800 ISO as its low base, but when you go into your high base ISO, you can use 2,500 as your high base ISO for low light situations or when you need a little bit more exposure. Personally, what I do is if I need a bit more exposure, I need a bit more ISO, I'll go up to 2,500 as opposed to 2,000 or 1,600, but then I'll use something like an ND filter to bring my exposure back in order to get things the way that I want it to. Now my Sony FX30 is going to end up staying on the 20 or 35 millimeter G Master lenses most of the time. And that means I could use a feature on this camera called focus breathing compensation. Now I know a lot of Sony FX3 and A7S3 users are a little bit upset at that, but this camera does have the ability to fix the focus breathing that you'll find on a lot more of Sony's more expensive lenses. And that's pretty much as far as focus breathing compensation goes. So if you're using something from Sigma or Samyang or another third party, that focus breathing compensation might be grayed out in your menu and you won't have access to those features. Now that might just be a way of giving more exclusivity to Sony's native glass, especially their high end line. But nonetheless, it does work pretty well for getting that focus breathing out of your subjects when you're racking focus from near to far and everything in between. One thing I like about having Sony cameras and staying in that ecosystem is color matching. When doing professional work, I like having two camera interviews or maybe having one as a handheld and one as a gimbal camera and making sure that even at S-Log3 with similar settings that the color is going to match up pretty well. That way I don't have to do a lot in post, I'm not gonna get super confused, and I'm not gonna bang my head against the wall because my two images just don't look the same. 
Crop has been such a good word in terms of the Sony FX30 that we're gonna just do it again. On top of the 1.5 times crop in APS-C that the Sony FX30 has, it also does have another crop when you're shooting at 4K 120 frames a second. Now at a camera that's sub $2,000, shooting in 4K 120 is a great feature, especially for you guys that shoot in slow motion. But just know that if you are going to use that feature, you are going to have a further crop on top of the 1.5 times that's going to be on this camera. Now for some people that might be a deal breaker, but personally for me, in terms of slow motion footage, I don't really shoot slow motion and wider angle footage anyways. So if I'm going to have to deal with a little bit of crop and I have the space to move back, not a big deal for me, might be for you, but it is gonna be a crop when you're using 120 frames a second in 4K. Now the Sony FX30 has not one, but two different card slots that you could put a variety of different SD cards in it to store your media. And for me, I only use three different types of cards depending on my situation. Now, generally speaking, if I want to just get things in regular 4K, no bells and whistles, I'll use a V60 card. Now, there's other modes that you could shoot using this card as well, but for me personally, if I'm just shooting in 4K, maybe a podcast interview and I need more file space, I'll just use the V60 card for my Sony FX30. Now, if I want to get into the all intra side of things, I'm shooting at 24 frames a second, I want things to look a little bit higher quality or match another camera I have like my Sony FX6, I'll use V90 cards. Now these are great when you wanna shoot an all intra at 4K 60, 4K 24 frames a second, 4K 30, but I don't necessarily recommend going into the S and Q mode for it, but in some situations you might be able to get away with that. Now if you wanna take a bank loan out or you have some extra cash, you can get a CF Express Type A card. Now this card covers all of the shooting modes in all intra as well. The 4K 60, the 4K 24 frames a second, the 4K 120 as well. This is a card that I would get if you need every single shooting mode that's available for this camera. In all honesty, I do recommend having one of these cards because you're kind of shortchanging yourself if you get this camera with all of its high quality features and you're not able to use all of them because you just don't have the proper SD card. Now, a lot of people associate shooting with RAW with cinema cameras and this camera can't do RAW internally, but you can shoot externally to an Atomos Ninja 5 or 5 Plus using the HDMI cable with the Sony FX30. Now this is the only caveat and you do have to be aware of it, but the only way you could shoot in RAW externally via the HDMI is if you're shooting in log mode. When I turn off my log shooting settings and I go into my menu and try to turn on external RAW, it just doesn't work. In fact, it tells you the reason why it's not working is the fact that your log shooting mode is off. That means all you have to do is turn on your Cine EI Quick, your flexible ISO, or your full blown Cine EI in order for you to shoot external RAW on the Sony FX30 which is a great feature that they added because you're gonna get one step further in getting higher quality image in such a small camera that's only 1800 bucks. Now I got through 10 things and here's a bonus one. The Sony FX30 and the Sony FX3 have identical body shapes, which also means that a lot of the rigging options and accessories that you can get for this camera are exactly the same, like in these videos right over here.